I, Joel Mendy here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, also co-author of books like The Survival Medicine Handbook, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, and Alton's Pandemic Preparedness Guide. Can vitamin D help you avoid a trip to the COVID ICU? Lately, we've been reviewing the potential for vitamin deficiencies to worsen disease outcomes in people who you'd think would be otherwise healthy and do just fine. What is vitamin D? Vitamin D is an essential nutrient producing your skin when it's exposed to sunlight. It helps your body absorb and maintain adequate levels of calcium and phosphate important for strong bones. In the past, deficiency of vitamin D was considered to be a cause for rickets, a condition which caused weak, deformed bones in kids. Recently, more benefits of adequate levels of vitamin D have been found. It might reduce the risk for multiple sclerosis. It may also benefit people with fibromyalgia, depression, and heart disease. It might even decrease the risk of severe cases of respiratory infections, including COVID-19 and the flu. Just 10 to 20 minutes of midday sun at least twice a week may be enough to produce the vitamin D needed by the average person. Despite this, a deficiency of vitamin D in the U.S. is seen in 42% of the total population. It's more common in people who are over 65, African American, Hispanic, Caucasians who avoid the sun, premenopausal females, obese folks, people on certain medicines for GI problems like heartburn, and victims of chronic liver or kidney disease. Those with bad kidneys or livers can't convert natural vitamin D into more potent bioactive forms, so they frequently suffer from deficiency. Other factors like weather and pollution come into play. Complete cloud cover drops ultraviolet energy from the sun by half, shaded areas even more. This includes shade, by the way, that's produced by air pollution. Put all these risk factors together and you wind up with a pretty big chunk of the general population. I was initially surprised that darker skinned people have more of a chance, up to 80%, of being vitamin D deficient. Most of us know that dark colors absorb light and light colors reflect it. Well, in humans, it turns out that the more melanin pigment in your skin, the less vitamin D gets produced by exposure to sun. It's hard, if not impossible, to get enough vitamin D from your diet. Vitamin D is naturally present in just a few foods like salmon, tuna, mackerel, some mushrooms, beef liver, egg yolks, just a few things. Some food items like milk and orange juice are vitamin D enriched. Infant formula, by the way, is required to have vitamin D added in both the United States and Canada. In supplements and fortified foods, vitamin D is available as either D2 or D3. D3 is supposed to be more potent if it's used at higher doses. How is lack of vitamin D associated with severe COVID-19? That's the question, right? Vitamin D has been found to reduce inflammation and modulate immune response. Now that's different from simply strengthening immune response. A body's excessive reaction to an infection may cause the immune system to go haywire. Presence of the virus can cause excessive amounts of proteins called cytokines that send immune cells into action. Now this overreaction is known as cytokine storm and it's considered to be a major killer in COVID-19. Vitamin D helps prevent cytokine storm while allowing an effective defense. Blood levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D are a good indicator as to whether someone's deficient or not. But what constitutes a normal vitamin D level? That's a subject of disagreement among a lot of scientists. Most agree, however, that a good level is rarely achieved at the current recommended daily allowances of 400 to 800 international units of vitamin D on a daily basis. You need more. Studies don't seem to associate doses as high as 2,000 to 5,000 international units with any major complications. And even 10,000 international units was not found to be toxic in a recent study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Other studies are ongoing using mega doses to hopefully quickly raise vitamin D in really sick patients, people that may have COVID-19. Having said that, the controversy in conventional medicine continues and certainly more research is needed. We know this, that countries with less vitamin D deficiency have less COVID deaths. To me, that's enough for me to want everyone to have a good vitamin D level. If it saves one person a trip to the COVID ICU, it's worth it. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you don't have a good medical or dental kit, I know where you can find one. Just check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.